2620. Just gotta wait for it to get here. Sounds like you're pulling hard. So we're in the 9620. Looks like we got multiple steering faults, but uh, this one's got the most counts, 51 counts. So we're gonna we're gonna go after this one first. I'm gonna check some addresses and see if they check out, and then I might have to do some uh, wiring checks between the two steering controllers. Let's see what we find out. All right, it's windy out here on the prairie. We're gonna go ahead and take the back panel off the cab so we can get to the steering controllers. So we can start doing circuit tests. Just gotta get my favorite tool out. Good old stubby. All right, excuse the wind out here. We are got the two steering controllers up here on the back panel. Um, we got the top connectors off, and I'm testing the wires in between these two connectors because the code has to do with the communication between the two. So these are the circuits involved in that. Um, the first circuit looks like it's good. 0.3 ohms. That's pretty good. So I'm going to check the other four and see what happens. Alright, we got the 9620 chooching down the field. What are we pulling? It's a Kenzie Mocktail 302. Going 10 and a half mile an hour. Doesn't hardly load this thing down, does it? No, it's a nice job. Picking up some dirt and wind today. Okay, we there were so many codes in it that I uh, went ahead and I cleared them all out. We're gonna start over. Let's just set it again. Is that the icon that's coming out? Uh -huh. A little steering icon. Then it slows you down to six three. Yep, that brings up. The... Okay. All right. At least we're getting things to act up. Go ahead and go hit menu. Go to system on the left. Go to diagnostic center. Go to trouble codes. And all of them came back. Looks like that uh, top one's active. All right, so attempt number three. We, uh, I swapped the K3 relay which also provides power to the steering B box, which is the controller we think we have an issue with. Um, tested power and ground at the controller. Um, it's got good power and ground. When I go in and look through the addresses, we got good power and ground showing on the controller. Um, so we're gonna run it one more time, see what happens. I can't get it to act up when it's just sitting. It's gotta be running, so let's see what comes back. Okay, so I'm, instead of putting in a DTAC case, I decided I'd go ahead and try one more option. Uh, called the shop, uh, talked to my boss. Uh, we didn't have a steering controller, nobody close had one. Um, so I called my boss to see if we had another tractor at the shop that we could rob a controller off of. Um, I gave him the part number, another tech, robbed the steering controller off another tractor, and he is en route to bring it. Um, the customer is meeting him halfway, and. I'm just sitting here chilling in my truck till I get back. Okay, we got our new steering controller here. Get it into place, bolt it in.
real careful with these. If you break them, you're screwed. All right, let's program it. They're everywhere. Must be moving fields. All right, we're getting the steering controller programmed. Anytime that you replace a controller on a deer tractor, you have to download a payload and install it to that controller. Okay, so little bad news. We got another steering controller. It was the right part number but it was a C box. So they took it off a tractor that was non-active command steering. Uh, the steering I have is active command steering. So if you have active command steering, you have an A box and a B box. And when those controllers are programmed for factory, it's burnt into the memory on them. They will always be a B box. They will always be an A box. So you can't swap the controllers. But I was doomed to fail because they, they got a C box off a tractor which you know it was the same part number you know when we're rushing around trying to get these tractors done you know we didn't take the time to make sure that that tractor had a A box or a B box whichever one we needed um, it just had one controller on it and it was the right part number so you would assume we could just use that controller and program it with the new serial number of this tractor and it would work but um, I had to put a DTAC case in because I put the controller on and it kept failing the, to program. It would go all the way up to 100% and right at the end it would fail every time. I would swap the controllers no matter what I did, same result, it would fail. So I put in a DTAC case with Deer online. Uh, you fill out a bunch of stuff online, a form basically, and then you send it to them. And I told them I, it was tech and feel urgent. So John Deere from Waterloo, DTAC, contacted me, I would say probably within five to 10 minutes, which is pretty good response time. Usually it's 20 to 30 minutes. So I talked to him. He told me about how the A boxes and B boxes will always be what they'll be and you can't change it. So that was a good thing, but he was able to go in and look at my reprogramming logs and see what went wrong in the reprogram and then he was able to tell that we got the wrong steering box so we i went ahead and ordered two new steering controllers and hopefully they'll be in the morning and we're gonna get the fab back to the gas station and get some more push juice because she's about empty so we'll fill her up so she's good to go for the morning go home and come back to the shop and hopefully we got some parts waiting on us um also, I found that the hydraulic oil cooler is leaking on this tractor, and I ordered an oil cooler as well. Deer only showed one on hand, so hopefully it makes it down tomorrow. It's not leaking bad enough to where the machine can't run. Now, when you get the steering controller problem fixed first, um, then if we have the, the cooler and we have enough time to put that in, we're gonna go ahead and slap that in as well under warranty. Um, the tractor's fairly new. It's only got 19 hours on this tractor. It's a 21 model 9620RX. So hopefully tomorrow we'll have the parts to get going today and get this customer running. Okay, well we had a little issue with parts. Our two new steering controllers didn't come in, so I had to track another one down at another store of ours. Um, sent the customer down to get that controller. I would have liked to put two on, but we're just gonna put the one on because it's our only choice uh, right now. So I've got that controller on, put the A box back in the original spot. So we're programming the B box now and hopefully it'll take the software and we can do some calibrations and get this thing back going. All right, I got the controllers programmed successfully. Um, when I started the tractor back up, there was a bunch of calibration faults for Celsius before I can do any of the other 
calibrations. So I've got jumper hoses hooked up to heat the oil. Here's my jumper hoses. We're gonna, I took the hoses out of three. We're gonna deadhead number three, and then we're gonna run one and two on continuous through these jumper hoses to create a restriction to heat up the hydraulic oil. Deadheading number three is gonna stroke our pump to, to the maximum, and then we flow one and two. Uh, let's set the eight and four. We're gonna set this to continuous flow time until it says C. So that's good. We just gotta remember to set that to eight and four when we get done. Set it to rearward. Grab the engine up to about 1350 for 1400, that'll be all right. Now we gotta get this all heated up. Okay, update. Um, I think I got the tractor figure out finally. Um, <clears throat> I couldn't have time to film because this tractor needs to get running in the field and I didn't have time to mess with it. So, um, I was able to calibrate everything successfully and I had to unhook the, the Kenzie from the 9620 in order to do the steering calibration and everything. So that took time, got everything hooked back up, went to the field, went like 200 feet. She fell on her face, derated, set the steering codes. So I went back through all the wiring again. This time I even pulled the terminals out of the connectors uh, for the handshaking wires between the two controllers and I load tested them. I tested the power and ground. I pulled the pins out of the connector. Everything seems to be good. Um, took off down the field again. Cleared, I cleared the codes out, took off down the field again. And this time it set a new code along with the other codes it normally sets and it was a code for the the a box steering controller lost communication with the pdu which is um, your corner post display where it shows your rpm and speed so i yanked that thing off the corner post and unplugged it we went six rounds and this thing hasn't quit yet um, it is possible that the pdu could be crashing the CAN bus and causing the steering controllers to do weird stuff so I'm gonna call the shop and get another PDU from another tractor since we don't have one in stock. But we have a brand new tractor sitting at the shop we can rob one from. And uh, I'm gonna meet him in the next field because this one's done and we'll see what happens. All right, got another PDU. Go ahead and snap it into place like that. And we're gonna program it and see what happens. All right. I don't know what attempt this is, but he's gonna try it again. Say a prayer. Good morning, YouTube. Uh, we're back out at the tractor. Um, we replaced that PDU. Um, the tractor went about a couple rounds and it failed again, so. That's not what it is. I was able to talk to DTAC again yesterday and they said that um, we need to replace the steering A box controller. So I finally got my controllers in that deer shorted me um, yesterday. So we're going to go ahead and put a A box on this tractor and see if that fixes it. Um, it rained last night. Uh, so you can see, field's wet. Bav kind of dug into the ground a little bit. It's pretty soft right here. Um, I think I'm gonna try to get the tractor moved up closer to the road so I'm not walking in this mud right now. But I got the uh, oil cooler in my truck. I figured since it rained, we might as well throw that guy on. So got that in my truck. So I'm gonna get this tractor moved back closer up here and uh, replace the steering controller. Fingers crossed.
This is gonna make a mess. box controller replaced because it just got a break in the rain and I wanted to put it on so I didn't get any water or any connections. So I hurried up and got that on. Now we're sitting in the cab and we're going to program this A-Box controller. I'm not sure what calibration is going to come up this time with only replacing the A-Box controller. Um, we'll just have to wait and see but we can't run the tractor in the field today but we might be able to run it down the road to see um, if we can duplicate the codes again. So fingers crossed. Let's hope this fixes it because I'm getting really tired of this tractor and uh, I'm ready to move on to something else that's green. All right, I got the controller programmed. Uh, while I was programming, it just started pouring down rain here. Water's just streaming off the cab. So I need to do all these calibrations now, but I gotta be able to do it in the field. I've gotta unhook this Kinsey. Um, so we're just gonna have to wait till it dries out to where we can calibrate this thing in the field. but. I think I'm going to go ahead and replace the oil cooler on the front while we're stopped for rain, so that's out of the way. Okay, I got the hydraulic oil cooler replaced. It was the easiest cooler I've ever replaced. You got two pins at the top, and then it sits in these grooves. You take out those pins, and then it just you take your lines off, and it comes right off. You set a new one in, hook your lines up, you're good to go. Now, it's not leaking anymore. I had to clean up all the oil down here as much as I could. I think we're good. Okay, I made it back to the field. It dried up just enough to where we could get it unhooked and drive it around and do our steering calibrations. Uh, so far, everything was successful. We're gonna fold this thing up and drive it down the road and see what happens. She's on the road. I think we made it about a mile so far. At an almost 20 mile an hour. That's plenty fast enough with that thing. So far so good. Well we made her about uh, two miles maybe and it set the steering codes again. You clear them out you can take off like nothing's wrong and you never know when they're gonna come back and they just set the codes and when you look them up they're inactive they're not active. So we got a really intermittent problem here and we're gonna get a hold of deer again and see what they want to do but we're gonna get this tractor to one of their sheds so we can get this tool unhooked because I think we're just gonna swap them out tractors because I'm assuming deer is gonna tell me that it's probably gonna need the chassis harness replaced so we're gonna have to probably haul this unit in yay okay we got the tractor hauled back to the shop we're gonna we went ahead and took the customer another tractor so I could get running um, this thing was just causing too much downtime so we got it here at the shop to where we get the pressure off of us to get this thing done. Um, DTEC wants me to verify the charging voltage and they want me to go through all the ground splices and ground locations first and then most likely we're going to be putting a chassis harness on it. So that's why it's here at the shop. All right, I looked up the wiring schematics and I checked all the ground points from the steering controller to the chassis ground and it all checks out good. Um, I decided I was going to go in for the splice, uh, the power and ground and can splices in the harness, and I think I found something. We got our B box controller here, and I knew the splices were somewhere down in here. You can tell here's our can splices. Look what I found. That is a can wire folded and almost cut in half. So. We're gonna fix that and just cut that bad part out, put a heat shrink butt connector in there, and then we're gonna run this tractor and see what happens. Okay, I got the wire fixed. Let's get her out of the shop and drive it around. Thank you. 
took the tractor on a five mile cruise and everything was perfect. So the we're gonna go ahead and haul the tractor back to the customer and we're gonna call this one fixed because it never made it five miles before. So thanks for watching the channel. I'm ZK Master Tech. Have a good day.